Good afternoon, everybody. Mr. Moo here in the cockpit, here in Elite Dangerous, here in Oil Estate and the Thedidic System. What in the? Hope everybody's having a good Friday. Saying hi to everybody here. Mad Biker Wolf, how are you doing? Says, uh, let's see here, got myself Thrustmaster T1500 Hodus finally. Having trouble making my brain understand the new rudder and yaw. Are you using the, um, um, are you using the paddles on the throttle? For the rudder, or are you using the twist rudder on the stick? Because you can go either way with that. Maybe one is uh, easier than the other. Hope everybody is having a good day. A weekend is here, and it's not it's not just the weekend, it's the weekend. The weekend before Christmas. God, time flies when you're having fun. So, what do we got going on here? Well, First things first, I made Triple Elite. I am thrilled about that. Combat, Trade, Explorer, CQC, meh. Whoever bothers with that. I made Triple Elite. Maybe someday if I really, really want to, I'll try for Quadruple, but eh, I'm happy with Triple. What else? Big announcement. Um, see that down in my... Uh, down in my announcements here on the Twitch page. But uh, yeah, there was somebody posted a video up on YouTube of Aegis exposed and posted some pretty convincing arguments that, uh, yeah, Aegis is not on the up and up whatsoever. Let's see here. Twist on the stick for the rudder. Tried making it left right on the stick like it was on my plane Jane. My ship just isn't as responsive that way. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've run into that problem before. So, I'm announcing that I am not going to be taking part in any more combat operations against Thargoids. I will take part in search and rescue operations for damaged stations if I'm down in that area. Or if I, you know, really get the, get the urge to help out and just kit out a super, super kind of rescue ship. Otherwise, though, I'm not... I'm not fighting the Thargoids. Until the new faction of Thargoids come out, and then maybe we'll reevaluate that position. Because right now there's the Aresians and the Klaxians, as far as I know. Two separate dynasties of Thargoid. But right now, I've no beef with this first crew coming through, and honestly, I've got a bit of a beef with the club. They are the group that kind of behind the scenes make the Illuminati look like rank amateurs kind of group and you can check them out on the elite wiki if you want the club club them over the head with a tungsten telephone pole in the meantime though well we got missions we got missions we got things to do so let's get to it the errantry alliance here in Thedidic we're actually doing quite well we're at uh to do 41 percent influence which puts us already as the main you know the majority faction here in system but silas grimes got back to me and he said hey we got some pirate trouble so we got three pirate lords we got to take out sounds like fun so let's get lifted off the pad here now actually i am not running in my anti-pirate configuration, I'm running in my super taxi, or my doom taxi arrangement. So, we're going to see how well this works against pirates. And if it doesn't work well, we just get more gun. I've got a Hank at my feet, I've got an Alex in my computers, I've got a Yuki on a beanbag. Life is good. Gear up.
actually, Matt, I had a similar situation with my, um, when I was first starting Elite. I used to play X-Wing Alliance, and I had the roll set up on the, uh, rudder paddles. And that just did not work for Elite at all. Okay, pull up the scanner and see where we gotta be. Incoming mission critical message. Well, not exactly spoiled for choice here. Oh, lovely. It's like we got a ways to go here. That's alright. Not as far as it could be. It's not a quarter million, it's just 130,000, and that makes quite a bit of difference, actually. How you doing down there, beast? You happy? You hankin'? He's hankin'. His tail just went thump, and I could actually feel it through the seat. So, as, let's see here, iMage1 pointed out, the ship, the EAS Night Saber, named after some old-school anime, Bubblegum Crisis. Specifically the, uh, oh, which one? Uh, Tokyo 2032, I believe it was. They made two series. One was an OVA. Actually, two OVAs. They made Bubblegum Crisis, Bubblegum Crash, and then Bubblegum Crisis 2040. And this one's named after the original. A lot of cyberpunk ele elements to it. A lot of uh, a lot of tech noir kind of ideas to it. Also inspired by Blade Runner. One of the main characters is named Pris, and her band was the Replicants. Nice little shout out there to some very classic sci-fi. But no, featured a mega corporation that was promoting and producing um, robotic workers all the way from low-level traffic traffic warden type robots to high-end military combat bots all under the blanket name Boomer. Well, when the Boomers started going crazy a group of power armor clad vigilantes went out and just started wrecking shit up. And that's the tale. A lot of intrigue, a lot of action. One of my first, one of my first introductions to anime. One of the first. So, yeah. Can you tell I'm just killing time here? Oh, uh, chat's a little dead at the moment, but hoping for these guys to pick up a little bit. Otherwise, I've got to just talk to a Hank, and he's not too terribly interested in listening to me talk. Okay, I take that back. He just hopped up in my lap and he's looking at me with these giant, giant eyes. Actually, he looks a lot like, um... And suddenly I, I blank. He looks like the dragon from How to Train Your Dragon. The main dragon. The black, um, the knight... Was that the night, night beast? Nightshade? Damn it! I have not seen that movie in so long. Fail, much fail. Oh, good! We've got some system authority vessels that can uh, maybe back us up in a few ten thousand light seconds. Hank, no. 
no, 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 no. I need that to fly the ship, Hank. Don't. Don't. Not, Hank. Excuse me. <sighs> All right, so Hank started started kind of sort of chewing on one of the cables, and so I tried to pick him up, and then he ended up um, kind of flopped against the side of the stick, which put me into a roll, which then he... he uh, uh, yeah, anyway. Hi, Flyer 07. Thank God you're here to save me from a giant cat. <laughs> All right, take care, Mad. See you soon. Hi, Flyer. Welcome to the show. You you just missed the uh, the entertainment portion of our program. Toothless. That was the name of that dragon. Except Hank is definitely not toothless. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, this guy, he, you just you just missed the momentary loss of control as he decided to flop over all of the control inputs here. So we're hunting pirates. We're getting pretty good pay for this, actually. And we can always put in at Spinrad Station and, uh, Call in some backup if we need it. We shouldn't, but who knows? Flying the night saber today, and it's in doom taxi configuration rather than in pure blow things up combat mode. So, we might have something a little interesting going on. No worries, <laughs> no worries, high flyer. What was the mission? Did you get paid? Did you get paid twice? Those are the best kind of missions. By the way, check down below in the uh, channel feed. Posted an interesting video link. I got... I was very... Very intrigued by that. And I've actually been to a few of those bases. I can verify that those audio clips are genuine. In fact, I was to one of those bases on stream. Basically, Aegis has a lot to answer for. Seven to ten million credits per run next door. Good stuff. Good payout. Okay, are we getting... Yeah. 7370B5. So it's either Marco de Rius or Spiker Jr. Or it's entirely possible we're going to run into both of them at the same time. <laughs> oh, what fun. Um, what's my opinion on board hopping? And for those that don't know, board hopping is when you take a bunch of missions, log out, and go into another mode. Like if you take a bunch of missions in open... You f take you f take your fill from the mission board, and then you go to the main menu and go to private group, rinse, repeat, go to solo, rinse, repeat, so on and so forth. Um, honestly, I'd say it's legit. It it can lead up to oh my god levels of cash, so in some ways it can be broken, but it's it's basically you just going in and getting more missions from legitimate sources. I mean, you aren't... 
You aren't forcing them at gunpoint to give you more missions, and you aren't, like, you know, doing some kind of super key combination to kind of trick the game. I don't know. I think... I think it's legit. I mean... You know, cards on the table, I've done it myself. That's how I did it, stack up the, um... Stack up the transport missions. Which finally got me triple elite today, so... Well, last night, but... I don't know. It's open to everybody. It's not, you know, you don't need to have any kind of super, super computer setup or, you know, have some combination of rank or whatever. I'd call it legit. As far as I know, it's not hurting anybody, so go for it. All right, let's get the head track on and start looking around here. <laughs> Good cash, but it feels so wrong. Lots of good things feel wrong. <laughs> That's all I'll say about that. Alright, come on, pirates. Let's see what we got. So, for those of you playing at home, this is the assassination type mission that I was covering in my one of my latest YouTube videos. And this is the part where you, after you honk the horn, you fly to the place you gotta go. And now we're just waiting for the proper signal source to pop up. Supposed to pop up at hip 7370B5, and as you can see in the lower left, that is the area of space we're currently in. Something like 21, 22 megameters away from the planet. And now we just wait. Circle and wait. But high flyer, how did I hear it described? Um, it's kind of like eating healthy. Eat healthy, exercise, do everything right, die anyway. Yeah, these missions do annoy me too. But once they once they get going, they turn into a lot of fun. But it's part of the game, so... I mean, to, also to me, board hopping is maybe sort of a little bit of revenge against missions like this. Kobo, hello there. How are you doing?
Things on my end are good. You missed the entertainment portion of the show. We had a cat kind of flopping around all the controls. And uh, me trying to be as quiet as possible about extricating him from said controls and failing terribly. Other than that, just the waiting game chasing after pirates. And if I don't catch him in the next few minutes, then... Well, maybe we'll figure something else out. Um, entirely possible. <laughs> yeah, starting at about the part where I say no, Hank, no, and then uh, the ship starts going into a roll, and then there's some grunting and some grumbling, and then it goes into a roll while it's yawing away, and yeah, anyway. Ah, <sighs> cats. Alright, we're going to give it three more minutes. And then if there's nothing, we're going to warp back to Thedidic and pick up a proper... Pick up a proper mission, or just take part in the Civil War a little bit. Mission objective detected. Thank you. Mission objective detected. Threat level 4 target. Yep, I made triple elite. One moment. Oh, we got a federal corvette here. Set 1-3. No, 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 don't you go pointing that thing at me. Balance. Split two, three. Diverting power to requested systems. Whoa, no, no, no. I don't want any of that class four plasma. No, 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 no. And there goes your power plant. Set to one. Powering engines. All right, that's one. Now we got to get uh, Marco de Rius or Marco de Rius at seventy-three seventy B five, same place. Picking up a distress signal. 
Sorry, folks. I know you've got a distress call. I know you're leaking fuel. The authorities will be by soon enough. I don't have any repair limpets or fuel transfer limpets. This is a fertile land, so what am I supposed to do? Strap them to the underside? All right, so there's our first catch of the day. Pretty good payout there. Actually, I'm not getting for the. Where's the bounty located? 7370 resistance. All right. So I'll need to dock here to pick it up. How much damage could you have taken? I didn't see him lay a shot on you guys. So now we just kind of zip zip around and wait for the next mission critical signal source to show up. Your kind words are appreciated! Hi Flyer, thank you so much for the donation! Give him some love and support in the chat please. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for that. Wedding barge. Why are you at a wedding barge in a system like this in the middle of a civil war? Still haven't written my vows, what can I say? Well, here's one of the things you can say. I'm sorry for dragging you into such a crappy star system. In an orca. Alright. Part two. Okay, that's that's entirely possible as well. They wanted a badass metal wedding. Okay, you, you win. But you don't do that level of planning and then go, what do I say in my vows? Commander, what are your orders? Ah, we've got another one. The Valiant Lament. Split two, three. Three distributing. That one stung a little bit. Right, let's not do that again. No, 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 no. Stop that. Stop it with that shield cell crap. Yeah, 
And power plant's gone. Balance. Alright, let's bring it down and just finish them off. gigs with less planning you know <laughs> come to think of it so have I okay third two down third one to go and that was at that one's at 7370 b4 a all right Yeah, come to think of it, I've uh, I've done similar. <laughs> oh, it was God. What was it? It was um, actually, it was December thirty first, nineteen ninety nine. Just getting ready to tip over to two thousand, and playing at some. It was the community center in Rock Falls, Iowa, which was just a repurposed elementary school. And somebody got the idea of, you know, hey, let's trip the main breaker at midnight. Well, guess what that did to the equipment? <laughs> the best electrical system that uh, 1950s technology can bring to bear, and these guys just decided to trip the main breaker without telling... Telling the crew, well, that cut the party short real quick. Yep. Well, there was a lot of alcohol flowing, and... Somebody got the idea to trip the breaker and scream, oh my god, it's Y2K. At the time, I wasn't the main guy there, I was just the roadie. So thank Jeebus for that, because I didn't lose any equipment, but, oh. This is the kind of guy that usually kept his cool. But you could, you could see the smoke coming out of this guy's ears when, uh, when he realized what had happened. Oh yeah, if they'd planned it and maybe passed along the, uh, information so that we could have properly insulated the equipment or surge protected it or something because there we go threat level two. Oh god is this skippy the junior pirate again Jackie Little. Oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Oh, 
Jackie Little. Competent. Fertile ants. Oh my god, it is Skippy, the junior pirate cadet. And he's running, and he's not getting there. Bye, Skippy. Set to one. Point six light seconds away, I think you can get some help. So, three up, three down, and about, oh, let's call it three quarters of a million credits on top of the initial payout for the mission. I'll take it. Shoot, should have hauled some uh, civilians here, too. Could have made a little extra if I'd. If I'd remembered we were coming out this way. I don't have enough um, cargo space in here. I've got four tons, and that's only one class two bay. Everything else is taken up by passenger modules or my shields. And anything I anything I pick up for the cargo they drop is honestly not exactly worth my time. Ah, uh, Zorgan Peterson, Kilo Yankee Lima, request docking clearance. Initializing docking procedures. Copy 2-2. Two, two. Gear down. Landing gear deployed. In fact, I'm running class 4 shields on this thing instead of the uh, regular class 5s I run because I wanted a class 5 passenger compartment in here. I was running... I'm running in Doom Taxi configuration. But it is a good looking taxi. So, if you go for the chrome paint job, you get chrome stickers, or chrome decals on the side, too. Yeah, I love I love the ship kit with the uh, forward canards and actually the uh, the closed off wing. What do we got here? More messages? Ah, reputation changed. I am now cordial with resistance. Awesome. Anybody want to go to Thedidic? Nope, you don't. You don't. No. 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 Ah, uh, well. Any data crystals I can take over? Or maybe an SRV? And haul your car there. Nope. Oh, no worries about the wall of text. 
just means participation. In a good way. You know, I've seen people participate and they're absolute dicks about it. <laughs> and nobody wants to go back to Thedidic, so we've got an empty hold. But we are full off of our sense of accomplishment. Or something like that. Gear up. Retracting I need to get more sleep at night. Of course, that assumes I get sleep at night. Grumbles. <laughs> but no, don't feel bad about a wall of text unless you're like spamming, you know, spamming websites or addresses or something. Oh, by the time my band went on, we were last two. Everyone was frozen and sad. Ugh. Yeah, that's that's no good. Yeah, winter stuff is tricky. Anything in the late late season stuff is tricky to pull off. So yeah, made triple elite last night. Passenger missions are the way to do it. Seriously. I loaded up a Federal Corvette because I'd sold off the um I'd sold off the Imperial Cutter. I should have kept that around for extra heavy Starlift, but no, I got dumb. Then again, with the cash I made, I could always buy it back real easy. Just loaded up with passenger missions, went out to you know, everybody wanted to go to the same place, and that was about 15 light seconds from the middle of nowhere, so... Load up on missions, make myself a sandwich, put the throttles forward, watch some YouTube, keep an eye on stuff. All good. I mean, it didn't make for gripping, you know, I, w I wouldn't show that on Twitch, but... Gear down. Down and lock. Oh, almost. That close. Alright, three dead pirates. I got the gun camera footage to prove it. You guys are all witnesses.
and sell my profits right here. <laughs> if you described the sandwich, it wouldn't be too bad. Oh, it wasn't anything too terribly fancy. Just kind of a, you know, rye bun, some a uh, little bit of BLT, maybe throw some ham on top, honey smoked. Damn it! Now I want a sandwich. Spec Ops contract, now what is this? These actions are considered illegal. And it's Narvert, so that's kind of home, so I don't really... I'm really curious about that, I don't want to do that. Spec Ops contract in Wang, though, I'll take that. Let's see what this does. I've got no no real attachment to this system. Still in Doom Taxi mode and haven't taken a single fare. Gear up. Oh uh, yes, we expanded to the Thedidic system. We're here in uh, the Didic right now, and actually, we uh, finished the expansion on Tuesday. We are already at 41% here, which makes us the majority faction. We just don't have control of any of the starports. So yeah, kind of proud of that. Also, I remember yesterday I was mentioning, you know, a, a mega ship once those come out, or a carrier for the for the group. And I thought about calling it the Albion, I think, or no, I called it the um, the New Avalon. I thought that'd be a good name for it. Well, somebody pointed out there's a much better name. Um. We need you to eliminate 24 civilians of the Bureau of Lehigh. No. I'm not going to pull that. That seems kind of dickish. Yeah, that that's that's straight up murder. I'm uh no. I have some principles. Plenty of vices, plenty of bad habits. One or two principles. We want you to kill a bunch of civilians. Uh, I'll have to get back to you on that. Yeah, we're we're not. No. So, like I said, I've got this thing in Doom Taxi configuration. Let's go haul some civilians around for money instead of blowing them up for money. And then we'll blow up anybody that tries to blow up the civilians. So some other poor bastard that took that uh, wet work operation.
So yeah, I was thinking that uh, the carrier name would be the new Avalon because that pulls off some nice, nice references to Arthurian legend and BattleTech and gargoyles, which I'm really happy with all of those. But somebody proposed a much more elegant, and yet at the same time much much greater reference for a ship name. Something that's just, I think, absolutely perfect for the faction, and I fully intend to name the ship. Once we get it, once the uh, carriers come around, and somebody was saying fourth quarter of 2018. So I got some, got some time to build up the cash for it. But if anybody's familiar with the uh, with this name, let me know. Errant Venture. That's that's perfect to me. And for those of you that get the reference, <laughs> what do you think? And for those that need to get, you know, need a clue or don't know what the reference is, let me know. Gear down. Gear down. Sorry, no idea. That's all right. It's semi-obscure, actually. So in the old uh, Star Wars EU novels, which are now Star Wars Legends, there was a smuggling captain by the name of Booster Tarek. And he started off with just a little shuttle, and he kind of moved up and got sent to Kessel to do a, do some hard time. Got sprung out of, uh, sprung out of Kessel. Got himself a space station to be the administrator of. Well, he was kind of bored by that up until he used the space station and bluffed a Star Destroyer, an Imperial Star Destroyer Mark II, into surrendering to him. The ISD Virulence. Well, he decided something like that was just the right size for him. And the New Republic government was forced to hand it over to him. Let's see, requirements not met. Unfortunate. And he decided to rename it the Errant Venture. And he decided to turn it into a flying casino. And stuck a bunch of billboards on the side to advertise with it. And decided to paint it barn red. Because Star Destroyer White was such a boring color. at 81, Wangaratari. Wangaratari. Unfortunate that the Alliance isn't offering anything, but well, we'll work with what we got. Alright, everybody on. Yeah, I wonder if the carriers will have paint jobs too, and if they don't, well, then I'm going to have to do like he did and just kind of scrounge up from various sources on how to get that paint. Gear up. Turns out the only person he could actually get that much red paint from was one of his most bitter rivals. And said rival had absolutely no interest in letting him know how he got the paint. It was kind of a it's kind of a case where Booster had no idea where he got the paint from, it's just that his people got enough of it. And one of the conditions of the deal was, you don't tell your boss where you got it. An Alliance CG, that is not a bad idea. You know, at some point I should really introduce myself over on the forums, introduce the group. Such a small group though, I didn't think, 
honestly, I didn't think we we would have made it. I thought we would have uh, fallen apart by now or just various life getting in the way. But no, the, the alliance has actually soldiered on. And now I actually have to go with step two of administering it. Because I'm the one that put my contact info down. Crap. All right, heavy side survey. Smilla in E Meister. NR5. All that... All that's her name, huh? Huh. Hell of a name. Harmless and wanted. Well, enjoy it while you can. Yeah, come to think of it, man, I, put, I threw this whole thing together kind of like the uh, dog chasing the car. Now I've caught it. I've actually got a bumper in my mouth. And I'm actually slowing the car down. What do I do now? <laughs> Passengers disembarked. Oh, Founder's World Permit. I already had one. As somebody was saying a few, uh, was it a week or so ago? It's when Elite initially went live. I was there for the beta and the gamma and, you know, it still hasn't gotten old. And I'm glad it hasn't gotten old for the viewers either. It's fun just kind of newt nooting around and seeing what we can, what trouble and what fun and what money we can make next. Oh, just best won the best crowdfunded MMO apparently. Neat. I'm glad to hear it. Also picked up the RPG, like I've mentioned before, and that's that covers a lot of other data in game, but also looks like a fun RPG. And here's hoping that uh, here's hoping Star Citizen gets their recognition on it too. They. Uh, I've made jokes about them before I've commented, but, you know, honestly... Oh uh, yeah, go ahead and post the link to the article. But I think Star Citizen, they're, they're coming along. I've had some setbacks, I mean, reading up on the development of trying to work with CryEngine, like, why? Some questionable design decisions in my mind, but it seems like they've finally gotten somebody to crack the whip. Sorgon Peterson, Kilo, Yankee, Lima, request docking clearance. Contacting the starport control. Sorgon Peterson, Kilo, Yankee, Lima. Be aware of local gravitational conditions when approaching this facility, Commander. 
Perfect. You're down. Damn, almost. All right, everybody, we're here. Don't mind the bump. Get out. Good afternoon, Vox. Not too much. Just kind of poking around, celebrating. I made triple elite. Uh, so I'm flying the Doom Taxi around. I'm just kind of zipping around in the Doom Taxi. You missed Hank trying to fly the ship. He's enthusiastic, but his uh, his skill needs a little bit of work. His technique's a little off. Okay, cargo hold's full with... Oh wait, cargo hold is not full. I just got messages that everybody disembarked. What, and all you do is pay me? Cheapskates. Let's see. Um, uh, yeah, he might be good with the rudders. The problem was he wanted to go for the stick. And with that, he, he didn't so much try to steer as he just kind of... He kind of just tipped over. I mean, one minute he's a perfectly vertical standing up cat, and the next minute he kind of slumps and flopped over to his uh, side on the stick. And he just kind of turned into an impossible to move lump. It was actually very impressive. Gear up. Cat physics at its finest. You're not wrong. Yeah, he 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 went he went from a solid to a liquid. And it was trying to, yeah, it, it, it was too impressed to be mad. I mean, it didn't stop me from grunting and growling and trying to, you know, extricate him without, with a minimum of harm to him and me. Because cat. Malcolm, yes, Reynolds. Yep. Well, Hank, my, my Hank is named after Hank McCoy. Because if you painted him blue, that's what he would look like. cat clinic here, they've uh, taken to calling him Hank the Beast. You know, with the Civil War going on th in the Didic. Oh, shush. With the Civil War going on in the Didic, that might not be a good... That might be a good chance to test how the ship can... Yeah. Alright, we're switching over to the Type 10.
And we're going to see just how good this thing can be. Or how bad. I mean, it's a war zone in a Type 10. It's going to be a target for everybody. But we'll see what uh, what we can pull off with it. Actually, I fully expect to lose the ship. Not that I want to lose the ship, but I expect first run around it's going to be... We're going to see just how bad it gets. Uh, no, no problem, Kobo. Let me, uh, let me get over to it then. Actually, we can go through it in detail. My anti-Thargoid setup on it was pretty basic. Um, the two upper class 3 hardpoints were AX, class 3 AX multi-cannon turrets. Gear down. The lower two hardpoints were class 3 AX missile pod turrets. And I didn't really have anything else in the way of armament. I had a fighter bay, a class 7 fighter bay that was... You know, just running the AX Taipans. So that's the weapon hard points. That's... I'll, I'll go over the hole right now then. Actually, I'm gonna... Get my bounties first, and then I'll go over. It's a Type 9 with a spoiler. Okay, so here's what we got on board. We are almost A-rating everything. I, if we haven't actually already A-rated everything. I'll let you know, though, the power distributor on this thing is garbage. Just to let you know, it's only running a Class 6 power distributor for four large hardpoints. So this thing really is... Pretty much primarily set up to only run AX equipment. That said... Right now on the hard points, I'm running all turrets. Triple multi-cannon turrets, three large burst laser turrets, and two small burst laser turrets. Utility mounts, I am running... Uh, one, two, three, four shield boosters, all with some kind of modification to them, looks like. Resistance augment, resistance augment, resistance, and resistance augment. Yeah, it's a shame, but it's expected. These other ones I should probably load up with uh, point defense, to be, to be quite honest. Uh, core internals, I'm running 8A power plant, military grade composite. Uh, I've got boosted thrusters, boosted FSD. The power distributor is charge enhanced and it is still pretty bad. Yeah, the bounty hunting CG is a good way to do it. Uh, running 4A sensors on this because I did want to make sure I saw whatever was trying to kill me. I could see him coming from a fair distance. So the optionals, we've got an 8A shield generator, and by the way, with four uh, Class A shield boosters, this thing is still only topping out at 893 megajoules on shield strength. This thing is pretty weak when it comes to the shields. A uh, Class 7 fighter hangar with a couple of F-63 Condors, both running the multi-cannon build. Full reinforcement packs the rest of the way down. One class three module reinforcement, a couple of cargo racks just because, and then more hull reinforcement. All of these uh, modified hull reinforcement packs, they are running the heavy duty modification. I think 
Grade 4? Yeah, Grade 4 Heavy Duty Hull Reinforcement. That said, my hull integrity is up to 5,012. So this thing is the absolute definition of a hull tank. And I need to throw some actual point defense on to protect me from missiles. That's what got me into trouble in the, um, in the rings last night as I was testing this out. Will it ram? Well, it kind of, sort of will. By which I mean, if you can get a target to stand still in front of you, and you can get this thing up to top speed, which isn't a whole hell of a lot, then yes, it will ram. Lights on. Lights on. Gear up. Gear up. Ship detach complete. Departure authorized. Yeah, Vox, this sucker is just a solid flying slab of armor with four engines and a hyperdrive slap to it. Pretty note on the engines, though. So yeah, there's top speed right there. This is with grade 5 dirty drive tune. I am hitting 279. It's like dropping an anvil on someone. Yeah. <laughs> yep. In fact, that yeah, you've <laughs> you saw the joke I was pulling the other day on this thing, and it's not wrong. Tuesday's stream, which was just me constantly posting a picture of an anvil and saying, "Hey, something faster than a Type Nine." Explored conflict zone. Yep, only conflict zone we've got is a high intensity over here, so why not? Let's see what happens. Worst comes to worst, we can certainly high wake out. But no, this sucker is not subtle. I've just loaded it down with turrets because, well, the turn rate is glacial. This thing doesn't turn, it just performs small orbits. You could get it to hit 300 meters per second, but you'd have to throw it into a 7G grav well to do it. On the other hand, it could probably handle a landing on Akinar 3 without too much trouble. Where's the... Co is the conflict zone inside the gas giant? That doesn't seem right. We're very close to it, though. Okay, turret fire mode is set over to fire at will. We can just close on this thing with Jupiter Chan over here, slowing me down. So yeah, your Corvette hull is like 2,900, but you've got a lot more shields. A lot more shields. This thing does not... I don't know, there's something off. 
This thing needs class 9 or class 10 shields, to be honest. Alright, who are we choosing? Ah, uh, the did it, Co. Balance. Split one three. Attack mode. Position for attack. Line. Ready for action. Okay, Commander. Going on the offense. See the distributor's already drained. Set three one. Attack my target. Killer Spud, extra pip and SLF. Is that you, Vox? <laughs> Maybe. All right. Well, all right. Hop on in. I guess we go with bounty hunting. Attack my target. Seriously? Alright, we're rolling this around. Set 2 1. Transferring power to engines. So I'm just running the multi cannon. Fighters. Hopefully that doesn't bother you too much. Set one three. Power diverted to shields. Set three one. Power diverted to weapons. So here we go. I mean, this thing actually handles a war zone fairly well. Attack my target. Eliminate the threat. Copy that. Let's take this one down. Set one three. Divert power to shields. What are these lasers aiming at? Finally, as they lock on.
weapons. Split one three. So for some reason I've got some nasty wander in my lasers, but other than that, the Type 10 seems to be handling this combat zone really well for a high intensity combat zone. I'm actually rather pleased by it. Handles war zones, it's not so great in um has res sites, unless you've got a lot more anti-missile defenses. And I won't deploy my... Well, no, I take that back. I will deploy my AI in here. He needs training. It's at 2-1. Come on, let's get some boost going here. There we go. Attack my target. Weapons free. Engage the target. Got the target on my scanner. Split one three. Redistributing. So I've lost one ring of shield so far in a hat's res or in a in a high intensity combat zone. Suddenly Python. Oh quit whining, Garrett. Get in there and hit something. Almost got him. Cobra, Cobra, Cobra. Set to one. Diverting power to requested system. Gotta be a big target around here somewhere that I can smack into. Well, you're kind of. No, no, there's no no way I'm gonna be able to ram an asp. Still shoot him though. Split one three. Attack my target. I guess I did hit him. Unfortunately, it did next to nothing to him because his shields were in a recharge state.
Garrett, can you take this guy out, please? I suppose I could do and fix some, or stick some fixed guns on this thing, or at least some, some gimbals. But, hmm. I'm not sure. I'm used to more maneuverable ships in a war zone like this. Oh, oh, oh. Type 9. Type 9. Set 2-1. Set 2-1. Oh, I'm gonna ram you into the... That was a lot of bumping, and I didn't take nearly any shield damage from it. If you could get some good engines on this, I imagine you could ram something into the Shadow Realm. Split 1-3. Alright, we've lost shields and we got incoming missiles. It's all nobles. Alright. Attack my target. Weapons free. Let's see what happens if. Yeah, I'm actually feeling comfortable enough to try the reboot and repair sequence while under fire. Nope, shields didn't come back, though. Doesn't happen when you're under fire. Split 2-3. Set 2-1. Figure this one out. Uh, set one three. I know what we'll do. Set one three. Power and shields. do it that way. Leave my fighter alone, they cost. Hank, now is not a good time for you to be hanking. Or, you know, to quote Brock Sampson, Hank, if there was ever a time I needed you not to be Hank. All good, Vox. All good. I'm not the greatest with fixed guns either. That's why I've got loaded up with them.
Kind of a sink or swim approach. Set one two. All power to shields. Well, I sideswiped him. Split one three. So no, the power distributor on this thing is garbage. I'm not sure what you could do about that if you just went with like all multi cannons or cannon cannons or what. This thing is holding its own in the combat zone, and yeah, it took sustained fire for, what, a minute or so, and I lost 8% hull? So yeah, if you stick in some anti-missile stuff to uh, try to keep the splash damage from missiles and torpedoes down, I think you might have a world beater here. See if we can't get this Cobra 3. Give my fighter some cover. Uh, no, actually, we're in um, Mobius. Just testing to see how a Type 10 works in a war zone, and it seems to be working pretty well. That 92% hull damage, that's because I had my shields down for around a minute. Uh, go right ahead, Kobo. Yeah, go right ahead. Methinks I need more multi cannons on this thing. Uh, Vox, we got a big one here, a python. And uh, if I can knock his shields down, you can. You got a nice big fat target for your multi cannon practice. Alright, that was a good ram. I enjoyed that. Uh, yes, Kyle Donovan. That was a good, solid ram. Damn. This thing's hurt. Got another one. Oh, and we also got somebody right here. Damn, two of my multi cans have already run out of ammo. I just noticed that. Well, it's helping the distributor a bit. New friend request from Kobo the Fox. Accepted. So no, this thing, I think, 
would make an excellent base ship for any player that wanted to learn how to run run more in a ship launched fighter. This thing is pretty much maintaining itself other than power, you know, handling the pips of the power distributor. So if you wanted to learn how to handle fixed guns in a chaotic, well, or just fighters, period, in a chaotic setting, and you can afford it, I would say this. Of course, I would say that for quite a few ships. I mean, even a keelback. No, 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 no. Sorry if I'm really quiet today. This one is... I've, I've not honestly done very much with a ship of this size in a combat zone, and I've never done a all turret build before. At least not the one that I was happy with, and I'm still not sure I'm happy with this one, but... Damn, you cannot argue with this much, this much hull armor. This sucker just does not die. I mean, the shields are also staying up pretty well for being only like an 800, uh, just a little north of 800 megajoules on these shields. It's holding up very well. And that could be the resistance boosters, but, well, I know it's the resistance boosters as well, but... And I have not engineered the bulkheads on this thing. I have only engineered some of the hull reinforcement packages. This is not boosted or engineered um, armor in any way. If I were to engineer the military grade armor on this thing, <laughs> go away. Well, I've apparently just made a big mistake. Be the first. Set two one. Returning power to engines. Balance. Redistributing power. Split one three. Redistributing. Yeah, even stock, it can really hold itself together, and engineered just kind of turns it into a... Well, it's it doesn't have any big guns for a knockout punch, but I imagine you could... Well, let me see if I can get my nose on this guy. I can kind of get my nose on the guy with flight assist off. I mean, it's not fast, but it seems to have somewhat decent thrusters. Set two one. Power diverted to engines. Split one three. Diverting power to requested systems. I mean, it, I wouldn't feel comfortable giving this all gimbals. I think this thing is primarily a turret build with maybe a couple of supplementary gimbaled weapons. 
And fixed guns are right out. I wouldn't put fixed guns on this if you paid me 10 million. Well, okay, I might put fixed guns on this if you paid me 10 million, but I get to decide how long I get to keep the guns. Nope, you don't get to go. Any other big targets around? Yes, Type 9. Set 1-2. Split 1-3. Come the missiles. Fighter is destroyed. Took too much damage, Commander. All right, so here I am, hole tanking while I get the shields back up. Set one three. Type 9 got bullied. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> and we're back to shield boosters. And we're about to lose the shields, but... Oh well. Who's the guy shooting me a lot here? You. Well, there's no shortage of people who are shooting at me, I suppose. I think maybe with a weapon-focused power distributor instead of the charge charge enhanced, that might work better, I'm not sure. Or shield focus this thing, but right now with the charge enhancement, I'm not getting any of my guns back. Let's put one three. Maybe replace the lower, um, the lower class two hardpoint with from a multi cannon into something else, because the lower multi cannon is obviously not putting in too much work because that's still got almost all its ammo, while the the upper multi cannons are just they're already out. Hmm. What would be a good layout on this thing? And who's the guy launching a fighter? Oh, Mr. Conda! Set 1-2. Cancel that. <laughs> I don't want to ram a Conda with... With no shields, I'm not that stupid. Set one three. Power to shield. All right, somebody just took out my thrusters. I'm gonna call in the fighter, and then we're gonna go for jump. Hard points are broken for the Type 10? How do you mean? All systems ready to go.
All right, Spud, we're gonna pull it in. Set two one. Powering engines. Fighter's been destroyed, Commander. All right, is there a place to set down in this system? No, there isn't. Actually, there are no large starports in Thedidic. So we're heading back to Narvert. Or we can uh, go over the damage and see how bad it is. It doesn't look too terrible, though. Thing does not want to turn well in Super Cruise either. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. I was just noticing that. I mean, I was seeing that the lasers weren't quite tracking like uh, like a turret ought to. What mission critical message? Well, Garrett got promoted to novice. Novice, that's good. Well, all right, that's that's important stuff. All right, get turned in towards Glidden, and okay, so we lost thirty-one percent hull in that total engagement. Target's heat can affect how turrets track. These guys weren't firing off. I mean, a few of them were firing off, say, heat sinks, but... I don't know. Something seemed a little more off. But that could just be me and my inexperience with turrets. So, thrusters, 1%. Given that the back end of the ship is entirely made up of them, I guess it's not exactly hard to miss. All in all, though, actually, looking at the the damage done, 80s, 80s, a couple of, you know, 17, 23, 65. All in all, though, this thing handled like a champ. I mean, what was really messing me up were the missiles. So if I were to... Yeah, if I were to load up on point defense turrets now, on the other hard points. This thing might be able to rip him a new one in combat zones. Oh, the large missile racks just didn't fire and left you. Oh. Damn. Yeah, I kind of ran into a problem with that sometimes. Um, the large missile rack turrets were 50-50 for me. Lake on Kilo Yankee Lima request docking clearance. Entry guidance computations complete. Vectors for descent. Landing permitted. Adjust heading for approach to badge 32. Copy 32. Come on. I guess with the thrusters at only 1% power, they're even worse. I'm not sure. Do they actually lose F, um, effectiveness as they're. Rating goes down, or is that just my imagination? You're on board, Commander. Ground crew are on standby. Gear down. Deploying landing gear. Thank you, Tower. I'm going to need some ground crew. Need some Bondo and Primer over here. And I've been getting a really weird knock from the engines. Kind of like shell casings rattling around. After a fit of rage, I sold the thing for a fertile ants. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. <laughs> I am, but I shouldn't be. Oh, that's terrible. 
Okay, so... A million credits and repairs. On the other hand, that beats buyback. Uh, let's see here. Vox, I'm gonna... I'm gonna disband the crew. I'm gonna switch over to the Fertilance and turn in my, uh... Cash in my bonuses, I think. Unless I can cash them in here. Which I doubt, but... I can. 1.2 million with the Didic. So I actually spent more in repairs than I made in combat bonds. So, how does this thing work in a combat zone? It works very well, but you're going to need... I don't know. God, it felt it felt good flying, but looking at that repair bill versus you know what I made. Hmm. Tricky question. Tricky proposition. Those turrets just the power distributor can't handle bigger guns to inflict more damage to up the overall DPS to take out targets faster. So I'm actually, I'm losing the DPS game, essentially. And when you're surrounded by that many targets, you're just going to want to saturate the area with fire. Or have a really, really good directed fire platform, something with gimbals or fixed guns that you know, you just point at a target directly ahead of you and make it disappear. This one can't work really as a gimbal platform. I don't think it's maneuverable enough. Spoiler, notwithstanding, I know spoilers improve handling, but in this case it's it's kind of a moot point. The power distributor is mournful. The Type 10, it's still a, it's an enigma to me. Works great against Thargoids, but it, I need a ship that can do a little bit more than that. I mean, even my Fertilance can make a great taxi. The only unitasker I have is really the, um, the Bifrost. And you kind of... You know, there's only one task when you're going out exploring anyway, so a unitasker is fine, but... God, now I'm sounding like the Alton Brown of Deep Space. I don't like... I mean, the Outrunner, it can do smuggling, a little bit of conversion, you know, swapping modules around. Easy enough. Dana can handle combat and can move a massive amount of cargo and people in case of trouble. Gunsight 1, I mean, it is just, the front end is made of multi-cannons, but it's also got a great jump range, so it's a rapid reaction kind of thing, and it can carry a lot of cargo. I've got 96 tons of cargo on this thing. I mean, that ain't bad. <sighs> so, what do you make of the Type 10? Tanky. Maybe fun with friends to just kind of screw around in a war zone or in a resource site. Would I keep mine? Hmm. Well, I haven't... I haven't put any in any components that uh, I would lose. Like if I... You know, I could store all the components. The jump drive thrusters. I haven't engineered the armor, so I could sell that off easy enough. Would I keep the Type 10? That is a very good question. I'm not sure. Chat, what do you think after seeing the thing in action? What What's kind of your, your thoughts on it?
You know, Vox especially, you got to fly alongside it. What do you think? Lights on? Lights on. In the meantime, we'll take uh, Gunsight 1 out for a little spin. Yeah, maybe try another weapon configuration. The thing is, I've got it down to burst laser turrets, and that's... I can't put beams on it. Gear up. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm going for. It's great in a wing. It's a support ship. Actually, if you're going back to the City of Heroes model, this thing is the tank. The problem is, Kobo, I've tried this with um, gimbaled guns, just a massive amount of gimbaled guns, both, you know, I've tried beams, I've tried burst, I've tried pulse. The thing can't turn fast enough to bring, bring guns to bear when they're even gimbaled. So it's got to be turrets, with maybe a couple of gimbaled backups. And the power distributor cannot even handle two medium beams. Not well. And then, I mean, if it can't even handle two medium beams, what are you supposed to put in the four larges? Well, hmm. Okay, in hindsight, maybe I could... No, I can't. They don't they don't make class 3 turreted multi cannons, do they? They just make class 3 turreted cannon cannons. Yeah. Yeah, thanks Kobo. All right, Garrett, out you go. Balance. Equalizing now. Fighter is ready to go, Commander. Yeah, they don't make class three turreted multi cannons, and that's about the only thing I would. Hmm. Cannons and frag cannons. I wouldn't put frag cannons on the thing. Attack my target. Eliminate the threat. Copy that. Let's take this one down. Target down. And this thing just sends a cone of fire into you. Built a uh, power plant sniper with four large cannons. That's possible. Attack my target. Copy that. Let's take this one down. There's also the problem of, you know, the thing runs a class 8 power plant and class 8 shields. And... I don't know. A conundrum. An enigma. Ooh, a target. Attack my target.
So what do you think, Kobo? When you say four large cannons, do you mean like put them on a gimbal or... So then uh, the other guns drop the shields and then you try to put the nose on the target and just blow the power plant away in a couple of shots? Or do you mean turret the cannons? Okay, so you meant the first idea where you just gimbal the cannons. That's... Hmm. Potential. Yeah, we aren't going to sell it just yet. We're going to poke around with some ideas, but... Seriously? Actually, you know what? Recall the fighter. Target down. Got it. I'm on the way back, Commander. Well, I'm not going to go engineering a bunch of cannons until I figure out how to, you know, what I want on it. But I could, yeah, I'm going to go for that right now, actually, and see what I can throw together. Seriously? Sir. Sir, do you mind? I am trying to dock the fighter. Sir. Retrieval complete. Ship is locked down. Sir, I am going to have to ask you to stop. Okay. Arthur of Camelot. Now then, said two one. Set two one. Diverting power to requested system. Medium and small hard points, turreted pulse lasers. Yeah. Okay, I kind of see what you're getting at here. Well, I do see what you're getting at. That's not a bad idea. Let's let's see what that does. Yeah, that was, that was a high bounty for a vulture, but that's about par for the course for the higher ranked ones. Honestly, the one that surprises me are the really high bounties off of um, Asp Explorers. Those things are just... holy crap. Then again, the high-end Asp Explorers always seem to have the dual railguns that just love smacking my shields down. Let's get lined up here and drop down. You know, I gotta agree with you, Kobo. Coming up with just crazy ship builds, and I do the same thing in Battletech, I do the same thing in Car Wars. I've just got massive folders just bursting with build ideas. Thank goodness for stuff like Mega Mech, where it's it's a more faithful adaptation of the, it's, well, it's a strict tabletop version of Battletech. You know, it just doesn't have the great graphics like the uh, new harebrained schemes game does.
You're down? The gear is down and locked. Wait, do they get gimbaled rails? I thought they were just straight up fixed rails. And the AI was really good at timing it. Because they're the AI and the AI is a cheating SOB in this game. Okay, a little bit of fixing, not much. Some ammo cost. Turn this in. Paid back my ammo. Okay, let's throw some gimbaled cannons in here. Maybe if I went with efficient efficient laser turrets. That would boost the damage and drop down the power drain. Rapid fire drops power draw, it's true, but efficient just seems like it's a much better... I mean, efficient makes everything better. I mean, it is just a straight-up, across-the-board improvement of all stats on a weapon. Whereas, I think they, um... The rapid fire. What well, rapid fire got nerfed a while back? I remember that. Shields offline. They took that out pretty hard. So let's throw in a cannon. Shields online. So, for anybody just joining us, we're uh, trying to figure out how to make a really... Well, see what we can do with the Type 10 Defender for various builds. It works really well versus Thargoids with the AX equipment, but given the problems of its maneuverability, its um, power distributor, and just basically... A few other things. We're trying to figure out how to make it into something other than an anti-Thargoid unitasker. Yep. Go with the efficient. Okay, all four cannons there. Burst lasers and small hard points here. Let's... Let's up those small bursts to beams. I think I've got the power distro to handle it now. I'd still like to do something about uh, about putting in some more, let's see here. Some anti-missile stuff, but we don't have any at Narvert, so... Sucks. Data link scanner, cannon, okay. Alright, we'll go with what we got right here right now. We've still got Garrett on board. Uh, Orion, I got bad news for you. This thing is already running grade 5 dirty drive tune thrusters. It has been the whole time. This thing, I went to Palin Speed Shop and uh, actually I used one of the... Uh, this is using thrusters that were formerly on my um, Cutter Corvette. Gear up. Gear coming up. 
No, this thing is running the highest power thrusters you can get. Hello there, Killer Spud. Yeah, uh, I'm running full boost right now, and we're just hitting 279 meters per second. Setting turret mode to attacking my target. Rolling this thing as hard as I can. I've got the stick full over and it's a kind of a lazy spin. Doesn't help how you feel about the ship. Yeah, it's not doing wonders for my thoughts either, but maybe we can, I don't know, maybe we can make some magic out of this thing. I mean, Kobo's got a good idea going with the sniper build. Maybe we just use these class three cannons and use it to push somebody's power plant into the scrap heap. That'd be a good one to go after. Morbid more bread in the war hunger. Interesting. Attack my target. Weapons free. I read you. Balance. Weapons. Transferring power to weapons. Well, not exactly what I was aiming for, but kind of worked. Kind of, sorta. Question mark. Uh, work. Have you tried playing the game without space dust movement effects? Um, no, I've not, but I kind of like it because when I go flight assist off, I kind of like having the visual, the visual cues to uh, see what my vector is. I didn't leave my cutter since when I got it till type 10. Oh, sorry to hear it. Well, I'm sure your cutter will forgive you. Attack my target. Weapons free. Engage the target. Got the target on my scanner. Let's see here. I've got no cover here. Diverting power to shield. Okay, let's bring Killer Spud into the wing, that way I'm not claim jumping. Okay. Attack my... The hell hit you all of a sudden? Unless that was me.
Well, it helps if I can get closer, I know that. Then there's this clown behind me. Sir, do you mind? Balance. Well, this isn't bad, actually, if I can get the gimbals around. Hmm. So, gimbal the big cannons. I wonder what would happen if... Shields. Transferring power to I wonder what would happen if I threw four of those big class three gimbaled multi cannons on the ones that I usually use for um with thermal thermal bullets. Maybe throw a couple well, make one corrosive. The rest is thermal. Hmm not a bad idea. Kamo Kazi, huh? Weapons. Yeah, my distributor would fry with those multis, damn. My distributor is having enough trouble with these two, uh, what, three medium and two small? I am hard over at full, full charge on these and still losing. Split one three. Redistributing. It's a great tank, it just Curse this Type 10. Lacon drives me to drink. You done hanging out yet, Garrett? Get out there. Roger that. Initiating SLF deployment. Attack my target. Ready for action. Engaging target. Roger that, Commander. I move you to attack now. Set to one. Give me that thing. Set to one. Balance. Equalizing power.
really got to get used to fixed guns here. Who's our next contestant? Attack my target. Bounce. Well, not horrible. I think that's all the work, Commander. I doubt that Type 9 is going to be any kind of trouble. <laughs> Killer Spud's got something. Attack my target. I reach you. Got the target on my scanner. Little preemptive chaff just in case. Weapons. Target. Balance. Roger that, Commander. I'm moving into attack now. Confirmed kill. And now for you. We're in the clear, Commander. Recall the fighter. I thought I had the approach right and I was just coming in a little hot. Man, that would have looked good though if I'd just zoomed in and docked. And again, there are a lot of things that would have looked good if they'd worked out right. The Reliant Robin Space Shuttle would have been great if it had worked out right. Lake on Executive. Okay, so the Alliance wanted results. What do you have for me? Lake on Scientist. Well, sir, we made the cockpit large as hell, gave it a new paint job, and... Ah, they won't notice. <laughs> Boing! Yeah, pretty much. Set 2-1.
yeah, we threw a spoiler on a Type 9 and replaced the uh, power distributor with delicious mountain grown Folgers crystals. Let's see if they can tell the difference. Weapons. Bibliophilus. The Type 9 and 10 do have the nicest cockpit in game, though. You have a funny way of pronouncing Cobra. <laughs> well, they do have a nice cockpit setup. Um, having that much glass out there just makes it a very big target. Yeah, all that visibility, you mean all that wide open target? Set to one. I don't know, it's... Mm, I would take almost... Honestly, I would take almost any other ship. Okay. Garrett, get out there. Solid copy. Deploying the fighter. Attack my target. Eliminate the threat. Fighter deployed. Standing by. Copy that. Let's take this one down. Weapons. Max weapons. Yeah, pythons. Pythons are good. Um, clippers have great cockpits. Orcas have spectacular cockpits for if you want to go exploring and you got a friend along with you. I will take an orca cockpit over just about anything else just in terms of the view. Thing does not make a good power plant sniper, unfortunately. Maybe if I went with long range cannon shells, because then it would up the shot speed. Target dispatched. It would up their flight speed and then, you know, less time to target, but cannon shells are just the. you can't snipe really well. Hmm. This is. this is tricky. This is. It wants to be a good ship. I can feel it. Set 2-1. Light fight in the distance, so let's go have a look at that. It wants to be a good ship. I can feel it. They need to fix that distro, though. The, the power coupling on this thing is just too damn tiny. And they don't have Class 3 missile racks. Except for anti-thargoid use. I mean, I'm topping out at 279 meters per second here at full boost. And these are grade 5 dirty drive tune 7A thrusters. Attack my target. Engaging target. Copy that. Let's take this one down. Weapons. Kind of helps if I give a, give some power to the distributor. Tiny as it is. Target destroyed. I think that's it, Commander. Scanning for additional threats. 
Recall the fighter. Returning the ship for recovery, Commander. Oh yeah, I've landed this thing on 4G. Stand by. Door opening. I have landed this on 4G Worlds. There's a um uh a system in the Pleiades. There was a ground-based installation of the 4G landing pad and actually this thing set down rather nicely. Which is to say, I didn't turn it into a brand new crater. So, <laughs> mileage may vary. Oh, you seem to got into somebody here. Set to one. Killer Spud's doing all right against those guys, it seems. Yeah, he's got that kind of wrapped up. Uh, I've not landed this sucker on Akinar 3. I've landed other ships on Akinar 3. Galaxy map. Display map. Now you're going to make me go to Akinar 3. Well, this one's not going to Akinar. This one would take forever to get there. Well, I say that. How far is forever? 11 jumps. Eleven jumps. All right, we're doing this. I'm rolling this thing over to Akinar, and we're going to see if this thing... We're going to put this thing through some uh, extreme testing. Let's, let's say we're getting, getting it some uh, carrier qualifications. <laughs> so I'm going to get set up here at Glidden first, and I'm going to load up a... Um, Load up a fuel scoop. I'll load up a fuel scoop so we can actually get there in a decent amount of time. I'm going to get my pilot off this boat because I don't want him dead when this thing inevitably decides that uh, it's going to want to turn into a brand new crater. can't believe I'm doing this. Well, then again, I just run a few passengers in the Doom Taxi and we're good. Alright, Killer Spud, I'm gonna... Um, well, unless you want to watch and watch in person. Otherwise, I'm gonna break the wing. Let me know what your thoughts are on it. Lake on Kilo Yankee Lima, request docking clearance. Requesting docking bay. Access granted. Set down on landing pad 25. Copy 25. Okay, you can tag along. All right. Come on, you get lined up, you pile. Of... You're down. Lady, I couldn't get this thing going 100 meters per second if I threw it off a cliff. <laughs> Gonna turn in the the uh, USG Shimura and crack the planet. Well, that would give. Tell you what, if I do that, my crew gets the mining rights. Okay, Garrett, you're off the boat.
Galaxy map. Galaxy map. Let's see if altering the tonnage changed the things around a little bit. Nope, still 11 jumps. Lights on. Lights on. Gear up. Retracting landing gear. As long as you land on the marker, that's an acceptable deal. <laughs> See, with flight assist off, it actually switches nose for tail pretty quick, which honestly surprises the hell out of me. So hey, all you need to do is convert this thing for flight assist off and fly it in combat all the time and you're golden. He says incredulously. You know, I'm actually going to land at a couple of, um, I'm going to land at whatever stations available in Akinar first, so that we can make a couple of attempts at this, instead of just me going, ha ha, ha, and screaming all the way down. Um, I think I might know the planet, or the system you're thinking of, uh, hip... One second on that. Galaxy map. 38064, maybe? Yep, hip 38064. Beautiful system. One of my favorites to go there. 38064 and 63835. I don't know, I haven't gotten the carbon scoring off my body yet. <laughs> that planet just crisps ya. But no, HIP 63835 is also... I mean, most people know about it, but I still tell people about it and they go, What in the hell is that? Uh, ACH... A C H E N A R. <laughs> Beetlejuice Two, the planet of um, the planet of charcoal and iron. Yeah, but no, seriously, if you've if you have if you've never been to hip 63835 <coughs> excuse me it is well worth the visit i went to that system and the first thing i said was that my navicomp was drunk i thought i was going to have to fire my equipment for coming into work high
because if you've never been to 63835, it is an O-class star, so just a, a monster bleeding light into the ultraviolet range. And it's got a binary companion. What, 63835? Oh, you don't have a... No, okay. That makes sense. I forgot this was a permit-locked system. But no, 63835A is this monster O-class star. 835B is a black hole, along with 835C and D, who are in a binary pair. So you've got binary, binary stars in a triple black hole system. And all of the other planets, quote-unquote, in the system are mostly stars of A and G class. And some of those planets, i.e. stars, have moons that are other stars. And some of those moons have actual moons. So if you're starting out as an explorer and you want a place to go that just has a little bit of everything, tons and tons of scanning opportunities, yeah, what's great is landing and seeing every star and black holes in the system. And yeah, like, when you're landed at um, Palin Research Base in the Maya system, you can actually see the light, dis the gravity um, lensing from the black hole around Maya B. And that's the same thing with 63835, although I think at most it's something like 200 some light years from the bubble. So it's relatively close for any up and coming explorer to go have a look at. It will make you a ton of cash. Yeah, High Flyer, it is a. Well, I've got it in my Navicomp. Give me a moment here and I will, uh, so I'm not pointed at the star. I'll call it up real quick. You can also see it visually, like, if you are, say, within a hundred light years of it, you can actually see a fuzzy dot in the sky. Whoa, that was close. <laughs> it just went zipping past that one. nearly went through that star. Galaxy map. Galaxy map. Come on. Here we go. So yeah, here's the system data on it. It's 300 light years away from my current position. All right, so 63835A, just a great big O-class star. Here's B. Uh, there's C and D. Here's a class L brown dwarf. Here's a class K main sequence. Uh, for 63835, there is no permit requirement for this one. This one is totally free to anybody. K-class star. An A-class main sequence star, and it's the ninth planet in this system. Uh, here's a G-class star that is 0.97 solar masses and 1.08 solar radii. This is basically our sun's twin. And it's just planet 10 in this system. This would be, this would almost be like the perfect star to find as the main sequence as a core star in any other system. Here, it's just meh. 10th planet.
Yeah, the, the only permit locked system, I mean, um, Alliance star systems are permit locked, Sol is permit locked. A lot of the throne worlds and the major, um, you know, just the major star systems that have influence on the big three powers, those are the ones with permit locks. Other than that, it is, well, also there's those unknown permit lock systems out in the deep dark, which God knows what you need to get those for. Yeah, good system for fuel scooping? Could be. Yeah, it's it's amazing. And then on the other side of the um other side of the bubble, there is when you get close to Sothis, there's a place I call the um I call it the lighthouse. And I don't know the official name for it, but if you if you're in the Sothis system and you look out towards the rim, you can see this this reddish orange glow. And it is actually this massive, massive star cluster. All class O's and black holes. Galaxy map. Stellar cartography. Let's see if I can find that real quick here. Yeah, here we go. S1715. It's the NGC 7822 Nebula. And if you're around Sothis, it's a couple thousand light years away from Sothis, but you can see this in the sky as this, this really, really distant glow. It looks like just very, very bright but indistinct star and as you get closer as you keep jumping closer and closer and closer it turns into this great big line of blue stars oh cupid's arrow okay that's what it's called i've just called it the lighthouse because you can see it from you can see it from the bubble and it directed you out towards um directed you out towards um heart and soul nebula But no, you can see that from Sothis. A tourist spot for lovers and newlyweds? I don't believe you. Lovers and newlyweds always send their tourist ships, their orcas, out to war zones. <laughs> now you got a place to go. Just be warned, I mean, it's with the uh, Formidine Rift um, mystery that had been going on for a while. The place has been explored to hell and gone, especially in that region. So if you're wanting to get out there just for getting your name on the map, forget it. But yeah, it is a beautiful, amazing place to go otherwise. Yeah, O-class stars and black holes, exactly. It is, it's astonishing. Oop, here we are. Okay, where's a good place to land here quick? Looks like the best place to go is Fortune's Lost. Or, for, yeah, Fortune's Loss. I'm gonna land here. That way I have a place to fall back to in case I just kinda go splat. Mitter and oh, an epsilon ND. Galaxy map. Display map. Uh, epsilon ND. Is that the really fast? Yeah, the place with the absolutely incredibly. Yep. Yes, I have tried landing here. <laughs> it's easy if you get in the approach in Super Cruise. Uh, as for the engineer who is here, that is... Um... T-1 
Tiana Fortune. Makes sense. Just gotten its way and let it hit me. That's... Well, really, that's any kind of suborbital flight. I just went up there and I waited for the planet to catch up. You know what? Screw it. Playing it safe is neat and all, but... By God, you people came here to see a spectacle. <laughs> Besides, I think this thing has the whole armor. I could probably just plow into the planet at full speed. Maybe bounce a few times and... Well, I'm not going to try that the first time out. We might turn that into a finale. Patrius rails against the London Treaty. You know, if you know your history, you know why that's an absolutely bad idea. Or why it's a poor... I take that back. It's not a bad idea, it's just portentous of bad events happening. Last time somebody decided to uh, go against a naval treaty like that, well, end up with stuff like the Bismarck. Do a flip. I'm trying to flip. It's not working. All right, Akinar 3, here we go. Let's get on the sun side so everybody can see the extent of this. Yeah, I'm flying the Type 10 just to see how it handles. Putting it through some extreme testing here. Funny thing is, the surface of Akinar 3 is actually smooth as a cue ball. All these craters you see, these are just ships that have crashed recently. But yeah, if you know your world history, then, um, well, yeah, tearing up the Washington and or London naval treaties is usually a bad idea. Let's see here. That looks like a nice empty spot. Let's see if we can make a new crater there. <laughs> Little do we know Moo's going to have the first confirmed kill on a planet. Oh, oh, we could only hope. I would rename this thing so fast. <laughs> yep, welcome to Akinar 3, land of high G testing. Ah, oh, damn. I forgot to put an SRV on this thing. <sighs> oh, well. <laughs> this thing couldn't carry 500 tons of explosives.
Okay, let's bring it vertical and try to... Come on, come on, come on. Gear down. The gear is down and locked. Well, we made it. Actually, I'm very surprised at that. I mean, I can't get a landing anywhere here, but... Terrain's just garbage. Gear up. Retracting landing module. Yeah, it slides in like a slip and slide. You aren't wrong. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's do the other approach. This thing can actually go vertical against the gravity. This is... I'm impressed. All right, now to test and see just how strong this hull is. Set one, two. All shields. We're going to need them. Tell you what, if this works, Lakon ought to be offering me a job for, um... Not fair. <laughs> if this works, Lakon ought to be offering me a job as a spokesman because, holy damn. Okay, let's get this rolled back around. Yep, I am a certified crash test dummy. Wanted to see how tough this ship can be? Well, here's your chance. No celebrities were harmed in the filming of this. Merely well-intentioned idiots. Okay, we are disengaging the uh, flight assist. We are just going straight in. Hey, finally got it over 300 meters per second. I've had dumber ideas, I just can't remember them right now. Gear down. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. So, um... Damn. <laughs> That's all I can say, just damn. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is why you get a Type 10, because it is stronger than dirt.
Damn, this thing held up. I'm... <laughs> I felt that from here. Yeah, no kidding. I've got the military grade bulkheads and then a whole lot of hull reinforcement. A lot of hull reinforcement. All of the hull reinforcement. And one module reinforcement. Scan detected. This eagle is going, what in the hell did I just see? <laughs> All clear. Carry on, pilot. His camera footage is going to be on whatever equivalent of you won't believe this or UFO files or whatever. His camera footage is going to be up on Galnet. Oh, please tell me somebody clipped that. <laughs> wow. Okay, so. Um, on that bombshell, I've been going for a bit over three hours, and I've got some real-world work to take care of, unfortunately, but there you go. There you have it. <laughs> there you have it, uh, the Type 10 Defender, which can also defend against everything up to and including nearly 7G freefall impacts. On that bombshell, take care everybody, I am Mr. Moo, a space sci-fi variety streamer. <laughs> um... <laughs> Wow, I am still just shaking my head at this thing. Take care, everybody. Have a good weekend. Have a Merry Christmas. I'm not sure what my schedule is yet for the next week. I am I might be on on Christmas. We'll see. And if if we do do that, I will keep things PG-rated, I promise, just in case you want to watch with family, because nothing brings the family together like watching some idiot crash spaceships at high speed. Ah, damn, everybody. <laughs> Take care, have a good weekend, and I will see you all very soon. Fly safe, and if you can't fly safe, fly dangerous. And if you can't fly safe or fly dangerous, hell, just turn off the flight assist and let it go. <laughs> Take care, everybody.